Continuing on with our certificate deployment, just a brief review. We installed the, the Acme client or CertBot onto PF1 and we generated a certificate, went through that. We then copied that out and imported it into RTR and so now RTR is good to go. And I've placed now a copy onto Server1. Actually, I, I brought copies down from PF1 onto Win10. They were saved in the downloads directory. And what I did was I created a shared folder on Server1 and I copied those files then over to Server1. And then what we want to do is we want to install the, the web server IIS role. You've installed it before, so I won't go through that with you. But then we'll pick up from there. So once you've got the certificates over to server one and the web server IIS rolled installed, then that's where the video will pick up from. So I'm over here on, on server one, and you can see the IIS role is installed and off of tools. So we've got Internet Information Server Manager. I haven't yet imported the certificate. When you install IIS, you get a default website, which you guys know. I'm uh, pretty sure you've done this before. I know, I remember too, we've done this as a Docker container, which is pretty cool, but this is a, a full, full blown IIS install running on the server itself. So this came from, from uh, a role, adding it as a role. So our default website is our, uh, our first website. It does have a web page and, and it, it is viewable. If we go to look at the binding, so you select default website and you go over to binding. Bindings is a term that represents associating a port with an IP address. And you can see initially when post installation, we're, we're bound to port 80, which is the HTTP protocol. If we go to add a binding for HTTPS, notice it switches over to 443. And then we come down here for certificates. We don't have one and, and you have to, you have to have a certificate to bind with, um, to the web server to enable HTTPS over port 443. So that's what we want to solve. We want to solve that issue. We want to get a, a certificate installed. So let me shrink this. If I go over to wherever I, I copied the, see if I can clean this up a little bit for you, wherever I copied my, my, pat, my um, excuse me, my certificates over to, I put them over on the C drive in a temp directory. So there's the three of them. And in this demonstration, the way that I'm going to import a certificate is I'm going to import the, the that P12 package. And it's noted by personal information exchange. That's how we note it as opposed to these are the individual cert and the individual key for the cert. So I double click on it. And it's asking me, welcome to the certificate import wizard. This is one of the one of the really nice things about Windows. There's a lot of nice things about Windows and this is one of them, the wizards that help you to walk through the steps needed to get a job done. Now, the key thing here is do not import this for a user. We need to import it for a local computer because it's gonna be tied to a service running on the computer. It's gonna be tied to the web service, not to, not to a user. So we say local computer, next. Okay, filed import, we, we, we double clicked on it so it knows that, so nothing to change here. Uh, we did not assign a password to it. Uh, we didn't, uh, but if we had, then here's where we would give that. And if we wanted to be able to export this certificate out of server one, just like we exported it out of PF1, then we would check this box and that would allow us to export it. The way we're doing it now, we can't. We can import it and that's that's the as far as it can go. So we click on next. This sometimes uh, you have to choose one or of the of the other options. I know you're saying, yeah, I know there's only two options here. Automatic will a lot of times work and I'll usually try automatic, but if you import the certificate using automatic, with automatic, it's gonna try to figure out where within the certificate store to put it. And the certificate store has got, got a lot of different places to put it. There's the computer section, which we chose. There's the user section. There's trusted root. There's there's a lot of different areas in there. and and. Um, so you have a choice there to say, well, let you, let's see if, if Windows uh, will, will identify where I'd like to put it, or you could then click here and then you could browse on where you'd like to put it. You can see all the different places to put it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and let Windows choose and we'll see if we can find success with that. Okay. So again, this is just when it imports certificate, where in its certificate store is it going to put it? So we're going to let it decide. Okay. 
and then finish. So the import was successful. Cool, super cool. We then go back to IIS, and again, we highlight our default web page. We go over to bindings. We go to add, and we want to add HTTPS, switches to port 443, and then we go to our SSL certificate dropdown, and there it is. There's our certificate. So we go ahead and select it, and we click on OK. We click on close. If we go, uh, you know, let's just go look one more time. So what we what we have now is we have all IP addresses. This server just has an IPv4 and an IPv6 address, but with with running websites on a server, you can. There's a couple of different ways that you can have multiple websites. One of them is by giving each one an IP address. The other one is by by the name. You can redirect web traffic by the name of the website. But this is simple right here. We're just saying whatever IP addresses are connected to this computer, listen on port 80 and send it to the default site. Also listen on port 443 and send requests over to the default site. Real straightforward. So what we want to do now is we want to check it. We want to test it. And so we open a web browser and we're going to navigate then to, to HTTPS server one dot in my case, ak.bobstaco.com. And then we're good. This uh, this went easy, and normally, it, actually, it, it I, I say normally, it, there's probably the flip of a coin. Sometimes it goes easy, sometimes it doesn't. This time it went easy, but if we double click on it, and again, this is Edge, not Chrome. So we're not given a lot, we're just told that the certificate is okay. And you're thinking about some of the stuff we see in web browser or in web servers and web browsers. Well, Randy, if I had just put in HTTP or just put in server one, would it have auto redirected? And uh, the last I checked, no. You you have to tell a web server everything. You have to tell it if you'd like it to auto redirect from HTTP to HTTPS and so on. So we'll come back and do some more work with this. We'll customize the web page. We'll put it onto the internet. We'll set up DNS to where it answers for www. But for now, we just wanted to get the IIS role installed, IIS web, ser web server IIS role installed, get the certificate installed, and then verify that it functions. Now, we are testing this on server server one. So before, before I quit, I'll pause the video. But before I consider it a success, I need to go over to some other client. I need to go to either DC1, Windows 11, or Windows 10, and also do uh, put this URL into a web browser and see if the server answers. So I'll do that, and if it doesn't, we need to troubleshoot, then I'll come back and I'll report that to the video. But every, if everything works fine, then we'll consider this video good. So just to take a quick minute to report back, I'm, I'm over on, on Win10, and again, Win10 is still on DevNet, and um, great. I type in the URL, and it came up and found the, the server just fine. The lock looks good. Uh, I, I go and I look at things. Well, I didn't mean to do that, but you get what, I, what I'm talking about here. Let me try that again. I go to connection is secure. Certificate is valid. And we can see that we've got our wildcard cert here. And it's valid through. Everything looks really good. Really good. Okay, we'll wrap up this video.